Um, I'm sure more about all this will come out in the next few months. I hope I am wrong. I hope I'm wrong because remember, if I'm right, Amber waited for a human being to die. Thankfully, I was wrong. Valentine was not Tommy. Amber would soon come out with a video detailing how wrong I was about Valentine's identity. But what I never anticipated, especially after Tommy was doxxed, was for Amber to reveal the real first name of Valentine. As it turned out, I was right about one thing. Amber was the other woman. I'm scared to talk about this. I am. So many of you thought Valentine was fake. Valentine's name is Erica, and Erica had a wife. You guys have never wanted to see me happy. There are so many of you who love to see me miserable. We do shit in our 20s that we regret. Unfortunately, it's like this is just staying with me. As much as I grow up, as much as I try to change, you guys won't change with me. You guys aren't changing with me. In her video, Amber made a plea to her audience to change as she had. The thing was, Amber hadn't changed at all. This was not the first time Amber had meddled in another person's relationship. She'd also done this with the relationship between Destiny and her ex-fiance, Brianna. Once again, desperate to be with anyone, after her breakup with Wifey, she would settle for a taken woman. In this video, Amber would show screenshots between her and Alexis, her best and seemingly only friend, who had previously defended Amber against her critics. In the screenshots Amber shared, the two discussed Amber's apparent tumultuous relationship with Erica. You guys know I struggle with BPD, so one of those things is when I get into a relationship, my partner literally consumes me, whether they try to or not. Here is me not making time for my friends because I am literally always giving every single part of me to Erica. I mean, I don't really want to beg for you to be around if I'm not a priority to you like I used to be. You started dating Erica and you literally stopped talking to me almost completely. It's fine, it just makes me sad. I didn't mean to do that. I just give a lot of my energy to her and then I feel like my social battery is gone, but I'll have to do better because I want you in my life and I want to talk to you and be there for you. Do you guys remember that night when my mom stayed the night with me and we colored? All right, so that's the one my mom chose. <laughs> She's gonna stay the night and we're gonna color. <laughs> People were like, oh my God, they're such children. Yeah, that was when I was breaking up with Erica. I have an easier time admitting when like I something up versus like the person that i was in love with f***ing it up so it's like i don't i just don't even want to like go there discuss it talk about it because it's just like a lot here's my friend alexis just being alexis and to top it all off here's a screenshot of me telling alexis that erica's wife called me while i was at a birthday party remember that birthday party i went to when i was outside it was super hot it was at a park it was that day. You guys went from believing Valentine was fake to them believing Valentine was my most recent ex, all for entertainment. Salty Crab would be the first channel to confirm Erica's identity in a video. She provided photos and videos from Erica's Instagram account. Erica seemed to be a fit-ish, average looking person. Many found it bizarre that Amber had somehow managed to have an affair with this woman. The confirmation of Valentine's identity would send Gullworld into a frenzy. Soon, more information about their relationship would come to light, and it would come from Erica's own mouth. Erica's wife, Brittany, would reach out to both Apathetic Facts and Jordy to share their side of the story. This is um, Erica. I do want to say how this all started was uh, me and Brittany were sitting in bed and we saw one of Amber Lynn's um, posts talking about masculine women. Brittany looked at me and I looked at her and I was like, what if I messaged her? I think I said like masculine women question mark or something like that. She messaged me back and we were messaging for a while back and forth, just like talking. Um, she did ask if I was with anyone and so I had talked to Brittany and I was like, what should I tell her? And Brittany was like, tell her that like, we aren't like technically together, but we're like by law still married. So I gave her that story. And yeah, we together initiated a troll. 
and that's what we were doing just to see if we could get a re you know some kind of reaction back some kind of message um and that's as far as it was supposed to go we kind of just like started talking more and more and more oh my girlfriend just messaged me oh, oh my girlfriend's calling me hold on we would video call every single day and then you know my wife was like hey you know, I don't want you talking to her anymore. It was not supposed to go as far as it did. Brittany told us she and Erica simply wanted to troll Amber. However, Erica took it too far, and it appeared as though the trolling from Erica turned into real feelings. Behind her wife's back, Erica continued to talk to Amber. And I was actually starting to second guess, like, her as a person. You know, maybe the haters are wrong, you know, maybe she isn't a bad person because the side that I saw of her wasn't the person that I saw on YouTube. But of course, Erica would soon learn how very wrong she was. She started becoming really possessive. You know, she kind of used her um, BPD as a crutch saying, you know, uh, me not responding to her in like a timely manner, you know, triggered her. And so it was almost like, I was being like forced to interact with her and she started, you know, talking about Brittany, how I always choose her first. <clears throat> She's like, you never choose me. You know, I'm always a second option. Amber, as she always does, grew extremely attached to her new love interest, too attached. And Erica felt obligated to enter a relationship with her. It was an emotional relationship that should have never happened she tried to get me to move in and the crazy part about this whole thing is that she was actually moving in with me august 1st i acted like it was gonna fucking happen instead of me i was being a and basically giving her false hope from the picture erica painted amber was extremely manipulative controlling and jealous she was always questioning me she would ask me when was the last time i kissed my wife i need to tell her every time i kiss my wife i need to tell her every time i have sex with my wife okay i don't i won't want to i don't want to say she casted a spell on me but she like you know it was almost like manipulation at its finest and i will say that that woman is a professional i dealt with criminals for close to 10 years i worked in a maximum custody prison and i dealt with inmates and I was not manipulated by not a damn one of them. She has a way with, with manipulating people and I've never in my life been manipulated like this before, ever. Amber would blame her borderline personality disorder for her manic behavior. She would even go as far as to use an app called Life360 to track Erica's location. And she was questioning me all the time. So, you know, she was like, why don't you leave the house, go to the store or something so you can call me and I'm like, no, like my wife has 360. So me and my wife have 360 and we know where each other are at any given time. She made the comment saying, I need you to put me on life 360. So I, I was like, no, a couple weeks go by and she's still pestering me about it. Still, And I, I agreed to it and like an idiot. And she was Googling every address I would go to. Amber was extremely jealous of Brittany, despite Brittany being the wife. However, perhaps it's understandable. After all, Amber was of the understanding the marriage was purely for financial reasons. But when Amber learned this was not the case and that it was a real marriage, Amber still did not end the relationship. I knew that she loved me a lot, but there was a lot of things that she did lie to me about. Amber Lynn was very much aware that I was in the picture. Let's get that really yeah. clear. Erica knew she shouldn't have gone this far with Amber and it took the death of a loved one for Erica to finally put her foot down and end things between them. She messaged me on the day my uncle died and my uncle like died and I was, I had a mental breakdown. I needed time and I told her like, hey, this is a whole ordeal for me. Like, and then she's, she's wondering, she's more concerned about if, if I miss us, like me and her. Are we, we, are we still together? And I'm like, I don't think that, you know, we should do this anymore. Basically, like June 9th was when my uncle died. So June 15th, whatever, we broke up. Amber, putting her empath powers to good use as always, couldn't even let Erica have the day to grieve for her uncle. Amber's feelings were still more important than Erica's, even on that day. Erica ended things not long after her uncle passed away. That should have been the end of it. It was not. She keeps messaging me every day, 
for like the next week. And me and Brittany are in the bedroom, you know, trying to watch a movie. This is kind of like where, you know, the truth came out. And Brittany like was like, who are you talking to? And I told her, I said, you know, Amberlynn won't leave me alone. It was like I was too deep to get out that I had to get my own wife to help me. Like that's where it got to with her. Erica complained that Amber was messaging her constantly, that Amber couldn't let this relationship go. But Erica was replying to Amber. Erica didn't end all communications with Amber. That task fell on Brittany. So the day I found out, I had called Amber and I'm like, so how long has this been going on? I was calling from Erica's phone. She just spilled it. She was crying. I'm like, you know that with all of this stuff that I have, all these texts, all these pictures, you know, this would be a circus for you. Like I could like really make things really difficult for you if I wanted to. Um, but I didn't, I didn't try to get any kind of retribution. I didn't, I was not vengeful. I was just like, please, you know, look, this is it. Stop contacting my wife, you know, this is it. Just be done. Don't message her anymore. The wife of the woman Amber was having an affair with told Amber to stop messaging. That should have been the end of it. It was not. The day after the first conversation between my wife and Amber Lynn, like as far as like, you know, you need to leave Erica alone. She messaged me on a, like a fake number the next day because she thought that my wife took my phone. That's the wife, that's the story my wife gave her, but I was really sitting right there during a the whole phone call. Amber had agreed to Brittany that she would not speak to Erica ever again. And the very next day, Amber went back on that. Brittany was not happy. How desperate do you have to be to be trying to chase after a married woman? So when I found out that, that Amber Lynn had been trying to contact Erica, I called her and it was on the 4th of July. And I'm like, what else do I not know? Like, you know, I, I specifically told you, do not contact. No means no. You know, in the first conversation, she's like, oh, as, you know, as much as it's crazy to say, I still want to remain friends with her. Like, are you serious? You want to remain friends with my wife who you just had an affair with and you're literally telling me this to my face? Lo and behold, she was talking to AKA Tommy the entire time she was talking to Erica. 16 hours after I caught the whole thing, Tommy was already with a plane ticket ready to haul ass to Oklahoma. So she was having multiple different relationships with multiple different people. She was talking to, I'd say like, I wanna say two people at the time. Um, it was some girl named Abby and then some other girl named Danielle. While I was talking to Amberlynn, um, she was talking to a girl named Danielle that was also married. She was telling me about Danielle and how she was crazy over her and blah, blah, blah. I'm a therapist, that's what I do. Amber Lynn is one of the most dangerously manipulative people I have ever met. Even after Brittany told Amber to leave her wife alone, Amber couldn't let the relationship go. Brittany had secretly recorded a phone call with Amber, confronting her about continuing to contact Erica. Hello? So who reached out to who? Huh? So who reached out to who? What do you mean? Did you reach out to Erica or did she reach out to you? Last time I, well, the last time I messaged her was just letting her know that like you called and pretty much just like the final goodbye type of thing. It was just like the final goodbye. There's no, I just felt like, <laughs> there's no final goodbye. Like, what does that even mean? Um, I just, I just felt like I needed to, but we don't talk anymore. So you mean to tell me you're not posting anything about her online? No one knows her name. Valentine's name is Erica. Nothing about her. And Erica had a wife. I just don't understand, like, you have an entire relationship with somebody you don't know, that you know is married. Like, what do you think is gonna come out of that? Like, that's the part I don't understand, to keep reaching out. Like, I don't get it. I didn't keep reaching out. Um, I reached out to one time as a way of like a weird closure thing because she did become like a really good friend of mine as well on, on top of everything else. I was losing that and that kind of like was rough. The part that's got me 
up is that a you knew about me b you were looking me up on instagram right i thought that you guys were married for financial reasons and that you guys weren't in love anymore and you guys i mean it's like i don't really know do you know how demented it is to tell somebody that's married not to have sex with their spouse like i said i you guys were just married for financial reasons like i don't know what she's telling you versus me erica is obviously a known cheater and liar like she's crazy and she knows it and i'm sure you do too a known cheater and liar did she tell you about that yeah yes she did all right but yet i was supposed to be different you know how you know how <laughs> you know how it goes she sacrificed a possible future with you why like, what's the point? Like, you obviously seem like you have your head on your shoulders. She don't show like, shit about you. Like, you know I've seen the shit you said about me, too, right? Like what? Just know that I know everything you said. So, you know, like the jealousy side of me, obviously, when I'm in a relationship, thinking that she's going to come live with me and that she's in love with me. Yeah, of course. I probably did say something because I was in a delusion state. 100,000% I could have said that. Well, I didn't find out um, until a long time after her and I were talking that you would act, that you would actually consider it cheating because for a long time she told me that you had your whole, you had a whole different relationship you were in and that you were living there. Like, Erica said a lot of lies. Well, um, Alexis has actually just come into my stream just now. So Alexis is uh, saying that you guys are just spewing a bunch of lies. Erica is a sociopath who has cheated on her wife multiple times, and she's trying to save her marriage by doing this. Erica would also reveal that Amber's friendship with Alexis wasn't as nice as she had tried to make it out to be. I wouldn't speak so soon because I knew how many people you went through. And I'm not going to, like, display your business or call you names. But you you are not the one to talk about relationships. I will say that. Okay. Homegirl thinks Alexis is her best friend in the world. Alexis thinks Amberlynn is her bestest friend in the world. Well, guess what? Like, Amberlynn talks shit about Alexis to me, saying it, she gives me the ick and the things she says to me, blah, 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 blah. Despite Alexis learning that Amber had been talking badly about her behind her back, instead of being upset with Amber about it, she kicked off with Erica. Message for Erica. Um, you don't scare me. And I know you told me that I needed to be careful and that you know more about me than I think you do. Um, well, vice versa. And yes, I've had a couple of girlfriends over the last year. Um, that's fine for me. I don't have a wife. And regardless if you and Amberlynn had a relationship or not, you've cheated on your wife before and you're gonna do it again because that's the kind of person that you are. So if you wanna play this game, Erica, I'm more than happy to play with you. And quite frankly, I believe this is probably coming out now because you probably can't pay rent again because you're a job hopper and you are unstable and your wife doesn't work and you have a steroid problem. And not only do you have to support your and your wife's needs, but also your other girlfriend's needs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Amber Lynn just messaged me on Instagram. Near the end of Geordie's stream, Amber sent Geordie a message on Instagram requesting his phone number so that she could call him. She demanded that he talk to her and Alexis on livestream, which he, in my opinion, wisely declined to do. She could make her own videos and live streams about it, and she would. The only reason why I ever said Erica's name is because, like, a family was being, like, harassed because people thought, like, Valentine was someone that she wasn't. And it's like, I know that I promised Erica and Brittany that I would not say Erica's name. And I didn't say Erica's name ever for like a way to get back at her. I wasn't doing it in like a malicious way. All I did was say Erica's name. That's all I did. 
I didn't share anything else besides the fact that she was married. Brittany and Erica said that they messaged me as a troll in the beginning. So Brittany is supposed to be a therapist. They knew who I was. They knew that I had BPD. It's just wrong. Like what kind of a therapist would do that to someone? When me and her first started talking, she told me that she was married, but she was married for financial reasons and that they were in an open marriage and that her wife didn't even live with her. Her wife was living with her partner, her, like her other partner that she was in a relationship with. I thought that was like hectic. Her and I did just stay friends for a while. You guys know me, I move really fast. I'm not gonna lie, I was single, so I talked to a few different people. That is true. Our feelings did start to grow for one another and I could tell like it started to upset her when I would talk about these other people. It was like in December when I told Erica for the first time that I loved her. Um, I'm not trying to be cocky, but she literally couldn't get enough. And she completely downplayed the relationship that we created. We started to talk more. Things became more sexual. This whole time I still thought she was in a open marriage. So I had assumed that Erica's wife was living with her partner. I also assumed that Erica was super unhappy with her wife. Erica fell in love with me. Erica was going to move in with me and she is downplaying everything that happened, especially after February 14th, when she asked me to be her girlfriend. And she's saying like how I forced her to be in a relationship with me. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> Erica is a known liar and a known cheater. She has cheated on Brittany multiple, multiple times. Brittany's a cheater. Their marriage is a mess. Their marriage is a mess. Amber finally got her chance to tell us her side of the story. She told us how Erica and her were actually in love and that the relationship was more than Erica made it out to be. She would also go on to tell us some rather disturbing things. This is gonna be TMI, but this is when our relationship got extremely sexual. We would have video sex, what are, I don't know what you guys want to call it. She was sending me um, sexual videos and photos. I was sending her sexual videos and photos. Erica would always give me the spiel of they don't kiss, they don't hug, they don't cuddle, they don't have sex, they don't do anything. Yes, they're in this open marriage, but they're pretty much just like best friends. During one of the um, videos that she sent me of her touching herself, I saw her wife's slipper in her foot right next to Erica. I'm telling you, like touching her leg while Erica was touching herself. The first question I asked her was, are you and your wife actually in an open marriage? And she said, I'm actually not in an open relationship. I have an actual real marriage. But I didn't even find out that like it was a real true marriage until months after, like I would say like two months after we started dating. So I would say maybe April, I would say April, May, somewhere around there. This is where I'm in the wrong. Um, I stayed with Erica when she said that she was in a marriage and that her wife would feel betrayed if she found out I stayed with her. Perhaps it's just a coincidence that within the same month of finding out that Erica was in an actual true marriage, if she did find out in April, Amber would announce to her audience that she was officially in a relationship, despite at that point having been in this relationship for two months. I have had a girlfriend for over two months now and I've been in a relationship and I've been happy and I just didn't want to say anything like really in my vlogs yet, I just didn't feel like I needed to. Why did she wait until the very month she found out her girlfriend was legitimately married to announce to her viewers that she was in a relationship? We know Amber tends to overshare, especially through her TikTok videos where she would heavily imply that she was the other woman, and she seemed to derive some sort of excitement from this fact. Maybe she found it thrilling to be in a relationship she knew she was not supposed to be in, and she couldn't keep it quiet any longer. I was too f***ed up to say bye. Like, it's wrong. Like, Erica firmly made me believe that she was in an unhappy marriage. 
that she wanted to be happy with me, that she wanted to come move in with me. Despite being misled by Erica initially, Amber knowingly continued her affair with a married woman because she was in too deep. Throughout the course of her livestream, Amber would claim that Erica was the perpetrator rather than the victim of much of the manipulation and controlling behavior that took place during the course of their relationship. Um, you guys are asking about the Life 360. Yes, that that did happen. She was like, Brittany wants to track wherever I go because she thinks I'm cheating on her. And I was like, um, oh, well, can we do Life 360? Like, I thought it would be fun. I was like, we can have each other's location. And the fact that she also downplayed that is really comical to me because anytime I would leave my house, she would get a notification that I left my house and she would say, where are you going? What are you doing? She would also Google addresses. Like Erica has a side to her that is scary, genuinely scary. And you can ask Alexis, genuinely scary. Like- I literally told you not to date her. Oh wait, say, how, how scary? Like she says the worst things you could possibly say to another human being, especially someone you're supposed to love. It made me fearful, I'm not gonna lie. Um, Tell them. Tell them. I'm not going to tell them. I'm not going to tell them what she said to me. No, 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 no. Alexis has seen, has seen screenshots and she knows my whole, like I tell Alexis everything. We're literally best friends, but, um. Despite Alexis's warnings, Amber continued to date Erica, almost as if she craved the toxicity of it all. Unfortunately for Amber, as with all her relationships, this one too would falter. The death of Erica's uncle had naturally taken a toll on Erica. Amber was also unable to cope with it, but for a more selfish reason. June 9th, her uncle dies, and then all of a sudden she just like disappears. <sighs> that was hard for me because I didn't understand it. I know that she was going through heartbreak and like mourning and grieving for days. She just wouldn't talk to me. And as someone with BPD, like it mentally was messing with me. And I would message her a few times a day and I would tell her, like, why aren't you talking to me? I can admit when I have like a BPD, like freak out moment and that it happened while I was in a relationship with her multiple times. So after we broke up, like that's when she started talking to me again. We were just like talking as friends. Yes, there was a little tiny flirting happening. And that came from the both of us. Amber's side of the story differed greatly from Erica's. It appeared as though Erica had left out many details and severely downplayed her infatuation with Amber. Their relationship was not as one-sided as she made it out to be. You could have been like, we can't be friends. You could have blocked me. You could have done anything. It was Sunday, I don't know, I don't remember what day, but it was sometime in June, 22nd or something. Um, Brittany called me. And she was super sweet saying how her and I are both a victim of this, both a victim of Erica, how I'm not the first person that Erica has done this with. I won't be the last. I felt bad. I felt horrible. Um, there were multiple times where I would even write in my journal in private that I feel like such a fucking shitty person for doing this. Though she was called by Erica's wife and told to not keep communicating with Erica, and apparently felt guilty for the affair, Amber still couldn't let Erica go. When I learned she was married, I should have, it should have been over immediately. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. But my brain just like wouldn't allow it. She blocked me um, after her wife found out about me. Did you text her off of another number like she said you did? Yes, I did. I. It was like this weird closure thing for me. I don't know. Hello there. Hey. Erica would once again return on one of Geordie's live streams in order to refute Amber's claims. This time, things went very differently than before. Amber Lynn seems to be under the impression that you guys were open and this is her way of saying, this is why it was okay for us to be in a relationship because they were open. No. Mom, no. 
So just flat out no, that's just a complete made up lie that... Yeah, it was not ever disclosed that I was in an open marriage. And I was like, what should I tell her? And Brittany was like, tell her that like, we aren't like technically together, but we're like by law still married. So I gave her that story. You know, she said she that made she a didn't... comment. She made a comment to me. I said, if my wife finds out, she will sue you. Sue her for what? No, I, I told her that if Brittany found out, my wife would sue her for what is it what is that there it's a law here. there's a law it's a law here in this state um throughout the stream erica denied nearly all of amber's claims the main one being that erica led her to believe that she was in an open relationship this was the entire basis for why amber believed for so long that it was acceptable for her to be with someone who was married Erica would also give insight into Amber's relationship with Alexis. Yes, at one point they did have some weird thing going on. Brittany would also make an appearance on the live stream to respond to Amber's claim that it was unethical for Brittany, a self-proclaimed therapist, to troll Amber when she knew she suffered with BPD. As far as my career, I am not a behavioral therapist. I don't know how that got thrown in the mix, but... I am not a behavioral therapist. I'm a therapist. That's what I do. I work in the realm, but that is not what I do. And I no longer do that. Um, I am no longer a clinician uh, by choosing. Uh, as someone that also suffers from some of the same ailments Amber claims that she has, which mine are actually diagnosed, um, it wasn't really... I don't... She's trying to make it sound a lot worse than it actually is. Much of the conversation seemed to be Erica and Brittany simply denying Amber's claims, a blatant case of she said, she said. She kind of made it out to seem like you were very much so interested in tracking her as much as she was her tracking you. No, no, absolutely not. That's not true. That's The thing that didn't make sense to me is you wanting to track Amber Lynn. I mean, Amber no. Lynn doesn't go anywhere. Right. So that, that, that didn't really make sense for me necessarily. So I don't know how that app works, but if you can see their location, I mean, you're always just going to see her in one spot on the couch. <laughs> no. <laughs> Erica would also address the slipper scandal. Kinda. She kind of was maybe under the impression that Brittany was sitting next to you or near you watching you do this. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And no, that's not the case. But, um,. As far as the videos and stuff, I, yeah, I will admit there was that, but I don't necessarily want to go in depth with that because I'd like to, you know, respect what's left and try to move on from this. What I, you're saying is Amber Lynn knew the whole time you were married and that you guys weren't open. Yes. After, like, the whole, like, after we kind of, like, oh, let's just say we're married for financial reasons that way, you know whatever so that's whenever things you know became aware i told her the truth there was much excitement at first about valentine's identity and the whole cheating scandal being uncovered but after this live stream opinions on erica and britney would shift dramatically throughout the course of the live stream it was obvious that erica and britney had no concrete evidence to back up what they were saying and they seemed awkward and unprepared Many now began to view them as liars and con artists, or in general, just idiots. There's there's a lot of contradictions here of Amber Lynn saying one thing and you saying the exact opposite well, and vice versa. I don't care. I, I could yeah. care less what she says. Amber, probably thrilled that Erica and Brittany were now being perceived negatively, once again took to her live stream to discuss her affair with Erica. Homewrecker Lynn? Yes. Scissor Lynn? Um. I've, I've tried. This is my journal that I'm currently writing in. It says, stay golden. I'm telling, okay. I have to tell you guys something. I literally, mine and Erica's relationship fully narrated. Like I have that all up in my journals and she's trying to lie. Uh, how are you going to lie to someone who narrated the whole relationship? Like stop your lying, stop downplaying our relationship and get a, a 
grip be so f for real right now. Not only did Amber once again bring up her affair, but she also proved that the 140 IQ she once bragged about in the past was way off. Oh, <gasps> that's hectic. Okay, favorite book, A Child Called It. I know that's like hectic, <laughs> it's hectic. That's hectic, oh, sorry. Oh, <gasps> that's hectic. Everything is hectic tonight, you guys. Uh, what does hectic mean? It means everything. It means good, it means bad. Sorry, hectic is like my new like weird word of choice here. And it's like, I can't stop saying it. I am wearing underwear, yes, yeah, stop being hectic now. Why are people so mean to you? It makes me sad. Because I'm fat. <laughs> it's just easy to be like mean to a fat person. Am I leaving YouTube? <clears throat> I think if people stop being so hectic, I will stay. I'm not smug. I don't know what that means. Alex, Alex, <laughs> Alex. Alexa, what does smug mean? Smug is an adjective that describes someone who is self-satisfied, complacent, or correct. Mm. It's that usually hurts or is not warranted. Mm. Okay, maybe sometimes. I don't have a labia menora. I don't have a labia menora. I don't have a labia. It's f***ing wild off the chain. And, you know, it's just a perfect pussy. In my humble opinion. <laughs> Every woman has a labia. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> I actually didn't. I'm sorry. I I missed a lot of school in my lifetime. The Erica and Britney drama seemed to run out of steam very quickly, but this wouldn't be the end of the drama surrounding Amber's hectic love life. By this point, Amber had been trying to convince people that she and Tommy had broken up. Me and now my ex, we are not together anymore. Like, you guys have never wanted to see me happy. There are so many of you who love to see me miserable. And you're getting that. You won again. But most viewers hadn't been fooled by her breakup video. In her live stream, she would confirm their suspicions. All right, so I, um... I'm in love type deal. It's been a lot. It's been like hectic. It's been really hectic. I'm not going to lie. I'm still. <laughs> okay. I am with Tommy still. We are still together. I know a lot of people are going to be like upset. Like it is what it is. And I promise I'm not like in danger. That's not a thing. You guys know that like I have been trying to lose weight and I actually have been. Like, I weighed my lowest that I've weighed in, like, eight years. 467, folks. Like, we did have a moment where there was, like, a breakup thing that was rumbling, and I saw it, and I genuinely thought that was going to happen. And I was like, you guys won. Like, you guys f won. Like, I, like, that's how I felt it, like, down to my core. And then we realized, like, that's not fair to us because we know the truth. Tommy is not a feeder at all. And I got permission to share like why certain photos were online. When Tommy was with her late fiance, they were long distance and they wanted to see each other more often. And to do so, they found a way to like make money. Amber telling us that Tommy and her partner only engaged in feederism for money is a complete lie. And that is according to Tommy and her partner. On one of the many feeder forums that Tommy and her fiancé used, they would reject the opportunity to make money from their feeder content constantly. Tommy's late partner would write, Willow lives over 1,000 miles away, so our time together is limited, and we tend to focus on us and not playing photographer for you. Tommy, who at the time went by the name Willow, would also write, Colleen and I love sitting in FaceTime reading these comments. We are flattered you think we are fake. Yes, we have a new combined Phoebe account. No, we haven't accepted any money from anyone. Yes, we are sorry to hear about your crack problem. There are plenty of resources out there to assist you with that. Willow. Many members of the feeder community had tried to convince Tommy and her partner to sell their content but they would always decline their offers. Anonymous, OMG, 
I find it such a shame that she doesn't make content on OF. I could spend thousands of dollars to see that belly. Colleen, thousands of dollars? Damn, maybe I should reconsider. Anonymous, you have no idea how many people would instantly subscribe to your OF. We still have our fingers crossed, lol. Anonymous, y'all don't know how much we all just want a peek into the fantasy of up close caring for someone like Colleen, but it being actually real. There are a total of zero USS BBWs who are actually bedbound making content only pretend fantasy stuff. It's like I'm trying to do a sales pitch here, my bad. But y'all are sitting on a mountain of gold. Colleen. Guys, if I did an OF, I'd have taxes on anything over $600 and I'd likely lose my benefits, which I had to fight like hell to get. I just can't do that. I'm not comfortable asking someone else to put it in their name either. Willow and I have talked about some things, but ultimately I can't risk my healthcare or other benefits. It was just a way for them to make money. It wasn't something they did in their like alone time. Like My sexy, gorgeous girlfriend at Willow Greer spent some of her last visit trapped under part of my super heavy stomach where she belongs. Not to mention it is her favorite place in the world to be. Baby, you are now and will forever be my perfect fit. I love you so much. Till next time. So they were like, okay, let's do this as a way to make money. And it makes sense. I, I can't change anyone's opinion. I can only sit here and tell you the truth. Can she prove the posts were for money only? Yeah, like she has proved that to me. Trust me, you guys, I would never be with someone who wanted me to get bigger. Like she has been in my life since June 18th and I've lost weight. She wants me healthy, she wants me mobile, she wants me happy and she wants to have a life with me. She wants to go out and do things with me. Okay, so anyone talking about like people moving like on so soon and stuff, I, everyone's timeline is different. I'm not here to like ever like judge someone based on that. Like I'm an adult, make my own decisions. You said hectic 572.4 times. I know. I'm actually, I, I'm, I'm fully aware. I'm fully aware. The Valentine saga had ended nearly as quickly as it had begun. Erica made out Amber was this master manipulator, but anyone who has watched Amber for a while could tell you that's how she is and has always been. Though Erica may have tried to make herself come off as a victim, she was the one who cheated on her wife with Amberlynn Reed. Ugh. Whether or not it was true that Amber was led to believe Erica was in an open marriage, she was clearly wrong for continuing the affair once she found out the marriage was legitimate. Erica and Brittany, coming forward after Amber mentioned Erica's name, seemed to be them stirring the pot and trying to pin the blame on Amber, rather than Erica taking accountability for her actions. Erica and Brittany said they simply wanted to troll Amber in the beginning, but the only trolling that took place was them making themselves look like fools. With the Erica stuff over with, and it being revealed that Amber and her feeder were still together, Amber probably felt like she was in the clear. However, a whole new set of problems would soon arise for Amber. Absolutely no, we're not friends again. And I will never be friends with her again. Especially if she is still with Emily. I don't know what to say. That's a hard no for me, dog. I don't have a labia menorah. I don't have a labia menorah.